Hello everyone, this is Greg Pacetti here at JTEC in Jacksonville, Florida. Today I'm going to take you through how to do a pre-alignment inspection. This is going to be part of your normal uh, visual inspection that you would do on a truck. So you should be pretty familiar with some of these steps. We're going to make sure that we're real specific and give you some detail on what you need to do before getting the truck set up on the alignment rack. And today we're going to be checking out this International Transstar. It's got a Max Force engine in it twin screw. We're just going to walk you through some of the things that you should do right before you get on the uh, alignment rack with the truck. So first of all, the big thing you want to check out is your tires. You should have a tread depth gauge, you should have a flashlight, looking for, you know, any issues in the rear here. Since we're lucky enough to have an open frame, we need to look for any fluids while we're down here. And so far what we're looking at right now is I don't see any signs of uh, bad feathering. We would want to look for a tread depth of at least 230 seconds, which is your DOT minimum. Or if you're running for a fleet, you'd want to go to fleet standard. You want to check out any cracks, anything like that in your leaf springs, any kind of sign that the vehicle is dog-legging. And we're going to come up front to our steer tires. Again, you'd want to have your tread depth gauge. You want to feel across it for any feathering. It actually feels really smooth and even. I don't feel any cupping which would let me know if I had a bad shock. But you're gonna wanna look for 430 seconds on your steer tires. You're gonna come around. We also wanna have an air gauge on us. Make sure that our tires are inflated to proper spec. And that's gonna be determined by your fleet. If not, then we're gonna look at the door stickers on the truck. And if all else fails, we have max pressure that we can run on the tire. All right, so now that we've got the hood pop, front of our International here, we want to start looking at suspension and other front end components. Again, for any signs that the vehicle is fighting against itself, I'm not seeing any cracking on our leaf spring here. Our U-bolts look pretty good. I'm gonna reach in here if I can get the camera and myself in. That looks pretty decent. While we're here, we need to check out our steer box. We need to look for signs of leakage. Something you want to do whenever you're doing one of these inspections is wash the truck. Get it inside the wash rack, spray it down, get it nice and clean, pressure wash it. I see I'm pulling back a little bit of fluid here. So it might be time to check out the seals on this guy. But then again, that's why we want to wash it. We want to look for active leaks. That could be some road grime. Got good grease purge coming right here. This should be a greasable fitting. If not, then that bushing needs to be replaced. And I am actually not feeling a grease fitting on it. So with grease coming out of that, that could just be road grime. Again, you want to wash it, man. You want to be able to tell what you're looking at. This drag link, you want to check for cracks. I've got absolutely no movement jerking on it. There's our steer arm. We still have our grease fitting on it. I see no visible signs of cracks. We still got the cotter pin and the castle nut. That's a good sign. 
I'm gonna check out our U-joints on our steer column next, since we're right here. Now I do have spin in the steer column, which is good. I like that it's nice and easy. I don't like all this buildup I see. Part of the cleanup that we might want to do. Do I have any side to side play in my U joints? Not feeling any. Now, if any of this that you're doing looks or feels suspect, you have the option to take a measurement. Especially right here at our kingpin, which is an important part that I'll show you here in just a minute. And while we're back here, let's not be a little scary mechanic. Let's get under it. Let's we'll see. Here's our tie rod. Tie rod ends. Connecting tube. Still got paint on it. We do have it locked around the threads. That's a good thing. Looks like our bushing is intact, but we need to put a hand on it still. I'm really heaving on that. I'm not feeling any movement, which is a good thing. I don't like looseness in the rod here. I still got a pin, my cutter pin and the tassel nut here. I'm not seeing a lot of excess grease around here. But this may not have been greased recently. Okay, good thing to put a grease gun on this guy. Make sure it works, purges nice and easily. Not seeing any fluid leakage from my shock. No cracks in the bushing. These look pretty nice, actually. This side looks pretty decent. Now we gotta go check the passenger side. If your hands ain't dirty, you ain't inspecting it right. All right, now we're on the passenger side of the vehicle. We got a little bit more room to look around over here because. Obviously, we don't have the steer arm. Again, we need to look for some cracks along the leaf spring. If they're shifted and out of place, I'm gonna get in here and just kind of feel around, see if anything's real loose. Good. Still got our grease fitting. Now another thing that you want to do is obviously you're going to be lifting this up. You're going to want to grab a hold of that wheel. You want to check uh, for your kingpins to have the proper uh, tolerances on them. Now if it feels too excessive whenever you grab the wheel and you lift up and push in, then you want to check your top bushing on your kingpin with a dial indicator. Remember, if it's a used set, which a truck rolling in is going to be a used set of bushings, you're going to have to have anywhere from 2 to 40 thousandths of a in play on those bushings. Anything outside of that is either too tight, if it's below 2 thousandths, or it's going to be excessive if it's over 40 thousandths. Same thing on the bottom of your kingpin, those bushings, you want to check those out. Those can throw off an alignment. And if those are right, but you still got too much shake, you want to check out your wheel bearing. That needs to be one to three thousandths. All those that I just mentioned can be indicators on your tire wear. They can be root causes, I should say. You want to check for any shock leaks, fluid leaks, things like that. Check out our bushings as well, top and bottom. Let's get under here. Be a real technician. Oh, we're good there. Still got our bushings there. Still got that cotter pin. Take your time on this inspection, guys. Don't rush it. Make sure you really get a good look at everything. 
Last thing we need to do here is we need to hop up in the cab real quick. Alright. We're just gonna make sure we grab a hold of our steering wheel here. Alright. We're locked in. We got no power assist right now. Tires are gonna be really, really hard to turn. Oh. Let me see if I can get you a good view here of what I'm about to do. And I'll walk you through but it. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab a hold of this column and we're just gonna dog the mess out of it, man. We're gonna figure out how much uh, play that we've got here, if we've got any unnecessary telescoping. We're not actually grabbing the adjustment here. We wanna check our adjustment, we wanna check the bushings. Um, everything inside this steering column. If I'm feeling too much excessive play, if it feels a little wonky out of whack, then I'm going to start diving in and inspecting that and trying to fix problems before I get on the alignment rack. Any issue that we found in this pre-alignment inspection needs to be addressed because you cannot properly align a truck, a car, um, a pickup truck. You can't align anything until you know that you've got everything affecting that alignment correct and then you can uh, worry about getting the tires everything else in alignment and being able to uh, have the vehicle track properly so we're gonna grab up on it for a little guy like me this is gonna look really violent I got a little bit of telescoping against the stop I don't think it's too much though. That's probably just a little tolerance that's built in there. So I believe with everything that I've seen that we can go ahead and close the hood. We can drive it up onto the alignment rack and get started. We'll let this driver uh, get his alignment done and get him on down the road. Thanks guys. This has been Greg with JTech. Thank you for watching my video.